Well, hello, and uh, welcome to this new session here. I'm just going through and explain a little bit more uh, about finding some underground targets. Uh, recently, one of the one of our customers says, "I'm having a hard time finding stuff, and gosh, it's driving me crazy." So, I basically told him to go out and find himself a city pipe and scan over a city pipe. Of course, he thought it was pretty much useless, but um, as you can see here in the results. When you go and scan a city pipe, you get a pretty good, clear definition of what a pipe looks like. And this is what it's like in the ground when you walk over it. Now, this customer, he used a Rover, uh, Rover C. And so this is what I like to show here and go through a couple of the details here on how I cleaned up this image in order to make it what it was, even though it really did need cleaning. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come right here and I'm going to reset all the changes regarding this view. So it pretty much goes back to normal. And of course, it doesn't do that for me when I wanted to do it. Um, there we go. Now, this is the way it looked originally. This is the original skin. And came to me saying, I'm having a hard time finding it. So I said, go to the perspective view and take a look at it. And so this right here is the perspective view. And he gets this. Well. What you have to do, is because the signal strength is so strong due to the fact that it is so close to the surface, the pipe, and this is a pretty big drainage canal, actually, when you take all the measurements, because each one of these pulses were two feet apart. So he's pretty good there. All I'm doing is here is I'm minimizing the height. I can maximize it. I can minimize it. I don't really need to zoom in or zoom out. And then what I want to do is I want to come up here and I want to rotate these. And so this is the standard view. This is what he got without any filtration, without anything. And when you hit a target, you're going to find that you really don't need to apply very many filters. But a lot of people like to see it very clean without too many distractions. So I'm going to come right over here and I'm going to look at the top view. And then I'm going to use my arrow keys. And as you can see, there's lines moving here by pushing the right arrow key, left arrow key, up arrow key, and then the down arrow key. And I'm going to come right here to the very corner that's this corner right here. And the reason I come into this corner is because when you first start with the unit, and this happens ever so often, you start walking with it, and the next thing you know, you're not having the machine straight, something's wrong, it's twisted. So what we want to do is clean this up. And the very first thing I'm doing is I'm going to come over here to correct all deviating signals to this icon right here. I'm going to click it. It's going to say correctly under the crosshairs only. This is pretty much the only one I use because I want to clean it up piece by piece rather than having it go all automatic. Now I can hit all automatic and then when I'm done it could look like this which is not what I want. Okay so with that being said I'll come back over here and I'm going to correct only the values under the crosshair. I'll move up row one time and I'm going to do it again. Then I'm going to do it again. And I'm basically just going to clean up this whole thing here, up the line, just a little bit. And let me move these back out of the way. Come back over here to the side view. And can you see now how easy it is to really identify that object? Let me hit the right button here. And you can easily identify that object and say, hey, there's something there. Now, this is not an error, though it may look like an error screen, because if you look here, you'll see the error screens come out and this is something typical. Had it been a true error, you would have seen this line here, like this here, but over here the same thing. And that's not an error. But if I push F4 key at this point, you're going to see that it would have come back down over here on this side. So since it did not come down on this side, that's not an error. And here, now with it cleaned up, you can easily see this is where the canal is. So the F4 key is going to give you a lot of help. But here, even without it, you can see it. So one of the things to remember here when looking at your scans is your top view scan is going to be your most important view. Be it here that cleaned up a little bit, or be it like this where this is the absolute way it came in. You really don't have to mess with it at this point because this is a long stretch. And you can see there are a lot of different areas in this. And right in here, this is that pipe or the canal. This is also important because had this been just a little bit lighter, then it would be something that's very similar to that of a 
um, of a tunnel. So let me go and do this the other way here. Make this just a little bit lighter. Okay. Make it a little lighter so you can see that a tunnel will start to have this appearance here. What I'm doing is I'm hitting the um, F7 key to, in to increase the redness. And you can see it here in the side scan view when I do that, how it's changing that. So that's what I'm doing. All I'm doing now is just changing some colors until it goes back to where um, it is. F8 is just the opposite. We'll just move backwards down the line. So um, in junior colors, I'm just doing this right now as an example so that you can see how some of it will look. And this is all important little stuff because having a picture that's really bright, this bright blue, this can be indicative of a tunnel. Of course, the signal strengths right here are far too strong, so you know this is really, really close to the surface. And what I mean strong is when we go back to all of our changes, let's make it back to apps normal, okay, to our original uh, scan. When I talk about signal strength, I'm talking about how long these values are, and when they come in and they're looking really strong like this, right here, you can see this is really close to the surface. Had they met a much shorter distance, if they come in naturally like this, or like this, that says it's deeper. If it comes in and it's looking like this, it says it's even deeper. So one of the things to re remember is that this equipment can and does very commonly hit targets that are well, well beyond 15 to 18 meters. Okay, so anywhere between uh, 55 and 65 feet, it'll still hit a target, no problem. Okay, um, I believe that's just about to get this looking somewhat normal again. And this is one of the cleanups that we're going to do because this is what it would look like if you're breaching over, if you're uh, traversing over a tunnel. Of course, this is a city utility, and anybody who gets this equipment, I'm going to tell them work on known targets. Known targets are targets you can look down. If you see a pothole on top of a street, you know there's something underneath it, or a pothole cover, um, a manhole cover. So any type of utility in front of your home, in front of your domicile, your apartments, anywhere you know, if you have a septic tank in the back, or any other no utility that's in the ground. Scan it. Learn from there. Once you can identify it, then go at it the opposite direction. You'll see it all change there. All right. Thank you very much, and I will uh, come back and do another one here soon. Thank you.